Ready to scream my taxi to sleep. Are we live? I think we are. Yes? Not yet. So we're about to go live. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, perfect. We are live. We are live. We are live. We are live, guys. So. Welcome to Hyper Talk. This is one of the most exciting sessions I think you're going to have. I do not want to water down the hype. Tosen, take it away. Yes, let's do this. Perfect. So let's do this. Hyper Hyper, that's the thing. Everybody knows Scooter is a German band. Uh, very nice song. So, but um, I want to talk a little bit about the festival. Jimban Minatech is a hybrid festival. What is happening digital, what you see already here. So we are all somewhere in the online space and talk to each other. But you also have this hybrid thing uh, with the Alliance Francaise. And um, there are some exhibition exhibits. Uh, you can watch and look at and, and also interact. And um, yes, we have brought most of the stuff as well into the MA space. This is a digital space, this is a 3D space, this is an immersive cultural space where you can actually meet your friends and you can walk around and you can play and you also can watch the stream. As I don't see many people in the MA space now, I think. Uh, nobody knows about it, so I just was thinking that let's, let's just talk about it a little bit. Because I have just five minutes, so this is actually the thing, you know, I mean, five minutes, five minutes, everybody, all the speakers just have five minutes. So I put it on, and uh, uh, then I don't talk. When the alarm is ringing, I just stop, uh, or just finish my last sentence. Okay, so DMA space. This is how it looks like when it's full. So everybody is a flamingo, and uh, um, we, we're going to have a lot of fun in this space. You can play, you can listen to talk, and you can also interact with other people. So you are basically a flamingo. And uh, this is when everything is kind of exploding. It was just before the, right before the Amaze uh, Awards uh, this year. So this is, looks like this is the exhibition for the Amaze Berlin Festival. 
And um, if you want to go in there, just go on itch.io and download CMA space. It's for Mac and for Windows at the moment. Um, we have wonderful games in the space. You definitely should play. So um, also Isabel Aver, who, who is uh, a co-curator co of the Jimbambina Tech Festival. Um, she collected some, she, she selected some games and she also did a wonderful workshop, a machinima workshop. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about this later. Um, this is all the stuff what I'm showing now. You can actually as well experience in the MA space. So like Space Fury from Natasha T. Um, Chivara. She's from Zimbabwe, which is a mobile game where you have to fight against um, kind of emoticons. And uh, this is a wonderful uh, game on, on Android. You can't play it in the space, but you should download it. It's pretty much fun. And um, she can't be for the hyper here for the hyper talks, but uh, she registered. So hopefully we can get her back on stage next year when we do the festival again in the physical way. So then we have Archipelago from Charlotte Moran. He's from Israel. He's a wonderful friend of mine and also a fantastic game designer. And he's going to talk today about this game, I think. And uh, uh, um, you definitely have to check it out. And uh, it's, it's a kind of a, it's a lot of islands. You can discover different kind of monsters. And I don't know, it's a very experimental uh, experience. It's a very experimental experience. It's weird. So, but yeah, uh, it's wonderful. You should play it and should check it out. Then you have Trans Factory from Afran um, Makov. Uh, he's from Ghana. And uh, he's a, actually, he's an artist and he just, started to make something in, 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 in game engine. And he started to make this crazy, crazy setup of a factory where there are robots and uh, you can interact with all this kind of crazy machines and you definitely should check it out. You can download all the stuff from the Amaze space and uh, you can play it on your computer. Um, Bobadash from Tabo, Space Seller Studio from South Africa, yes. He's going to talk as well at the Hyper Talks. And uh, it's a fantastic game. We just were talking before. It's a waste picker game. And uh, if you've been in South Africa, and, and also he told me it's in a lot of different countries, you also have waste pickers. And it's a game about the culture and as well the story about waste pickers. And it's a racing game. He definitely is a must play. Then this game is actually at the moment not uh, online. Probably after the festival, we're going to integrate it into the Amaze space. It's from Duncan, and uh, the game is called Mashiwa, and it's by Dung Beetle Studio from Kenya. And it's going to be a fighting game with African mythology and kind of characters from Africa. So you also see um, um, some VR um, films, which we also have in the space. It's the Doors of Chibok and the forgotten ones and African space makers. You can see when you are in Nairobi, you can actually go to a place, you go to the website first, and then you find out the location, and then you can go and watch the movies with VR headsets, even better than just on the screen. Then we have the Machinima um, by Isabel Aver. She was working together with the Department of Design and Creative Media of Technology Technical University of Kenya and the African Digital Media Institute. She had, I think, one week or two weeks and uh, were doing some kind of cool uh, machinima movies in, in, in Nairobi. And she was also kind of uh, 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 assisted by the Kenyan storyteller, the Alumbe Namai. And um, yeah, what is a machinima? You do movies with or inside a 3D engine, or you use games and talk over it. It's fantastic, and you definitely have to check it out. So hyper, hyper, we are ready. I mean, it's already alarmed. The time is over. So these are the speakers. Amaze Hyper Talks with Calvin Nathan, Vikungung with Chabo Sulo with Natasha. She's not here. Uh, Bethlehem is not here. And with Charlotte Moran and Martina Marchio. So, Sheila, back to Nairobi. Hyper, hyper, it's time for a hyper talk. And our, hyper, first, hyper. our first speaker, are you ready? 
Yes. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do this. Go ahead. It's your time. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much uh, uh, for inviting me, and thank you for this uh, introduction. My name is Shalev, originally from Israel, now living in Denmark. And welcome to my Hyper Talk, the cyclical adventure game. So, daily challenges. In 2015, I was working my first game job on a free-to-play mobile game for a big company called Plarium. Among my duties as a narrative designer was to make uh, daily and weekly challenges and seasonal content. This uh, design pattern was, and to a large extent still is, regarded as an afterthought, something that is required for retention in free-to-play games with recurrent user spending, but something that is outside the game's uh, core experience, something that is a little dirty, like a business mandated layer of fat on top of the real game experience. Uh, but through working on it, through having to focus on it as a part of my job, a curiosity grew in me. How would daily levels and daily challenges and seasonal content look if they came from a more honest, creative intent? What if a game was about this design pattern? I'm going to make a very broad generalization and say that the first generation of highly regarded indie games and artful games, uh, the games that we still have to talk about nowadays, grew out of the tradition of mainstream PC and console gaming. Uh, how the creators uh, of this generation's biggest indie games take the conventions of mainstream premium games and subvert them. Dear Esther was a Half-Life mod. Gone Home was made by people that previously worked on Bioshock. Disco Elysium is a classic uh, RPG subverted, and Braid subverts uh, Super Mario. I want to be part of the new generation of game makers that do the same thing for the new mainstream. Uh, the people that subvert the tropes and patterns of mainstream mobile games, of uh, games as a service, of free-to-play games, of early access, I want to subvert casual games. Instead of thinking about how to subvert level design, I want to think about how to subvert live operations. In 1986, American author Ursula Le Guin wrote a beautiful short essay called The Carrier Bag Theory of Fiction. It is short enough that I feel comfortable asking you to read it, uh, and I already, it, it, it's already so concise that if I attempt to sum it up even further in the minute I have left, I am doomed to fail. But her bottom line is this, that's what I wanna bring here. The stories that we tell ourselves in fiction have mostly been following the same shape, uh, the shape of an arrow going from uh, point A and ending at point B, from the hero's hand to the villain that it kills. Even when it's a love story and there is no killing, it is still tries to kill the story itself. If they lived happily ever after, then they are as good as dead. And most of our games are also shaped in the same way. Even when we are not trying to defeat the final boss, we are still trying to solve the puzzle, to bring back harmony, and harmony is death. Even in games that don't end, we're still usually focused on winning, on getting more points, onwards and upwards, like an arrow. In fiction and in games, we need new shapes for our stories. To try and answer all of these questions, I'm now working on a game called Archipelago. It is a cyclical adventure game. Each real world day has uh, its own unique level and players can return to this level at the same day, year after year, to uncover more of the secrets. To simplify, here's how it works. There are 365 levels, one for each day of the year. The game is cyclical. It's never formally ending and beginning on whatever level is today's level. And you can only play today's level and you can always return to it next year uh, on the same date. If you skip a day, you <laughs> skip a level and the game won't punish you for it. Um, players, uh, 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 go deeper into the story like a spiral by visiting levels year after year 
uh, uh, after uh, to reveal more of their secrets. In Archipelago, every level is a small island. It tells the story of a traveler searching for home uh, in an island country inspired by my experience leaving my birth country and immigrating to Denmark. I want to make it a sort of an immigrant epic about people that move because it is a game that is about motion, a motion that never reaches its final destination. And I think that's okay. Thank you so much. Good job. <laughs> Brilliant presentation. <laughs> Tosan? Are you still with us? Yes, I'm back. That was wonderful. Thank you very much, Shaleh. Um, it was very, very, I think this is a talk what you definitely should write down because there is so much information in there, what I actually can't get in, in one or in five minutes, something like that really really good there's a lot of uh, uh, um, thought in there and it's very deep and uh, i definitely want to talk about um, this very much later or very very soon so in 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 the future because i'm i'm very interested in this kind of thinking what you have um we 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 i think is there already some other examples in this kind of way or is this something what is completely new I think uh, that we can look for mainstream things like um, uh, Animal Crossing for some inspiration. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a German game that came out recently called The Longing that is very experimental. Mm -hmm. But also it can, can kind of inspire with this like real life, very slow, uh, 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 you know, the real timeness of it is very interesting. So I think these are two big inspirations. Cool. So you're going to continue working on that. That's fantastic. So you also can see it in the exhibition. You take the chance, download the game, and play it. Um, since, since when you're working on that game? Uh, I made a prototype that was like a text adventure with some friends in 2016. Uh, and then uh, we even showed it around, but we dropped it for a while. And then I came back to it uh, this year for my thesis. I, I did a, a thesis in game design here in, uh, in Denmark. So I made it as my thesis game. That's the game that is playable in the exhibition. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a week out of the year. It's seven islands that you can visit. And now I'm slowly working with a programmer to make a, a third version that is kind of like the, the full, you know, kind of the commercial version that we're, sl we're slowly, slowly working on. But this, uh, just sorry, because I'm super interested. Usually these are not the hyper talks. Hyper talks are very quick, quick, quick. So everybody is like, oh, <laughs> we, have, we have so much time now because I mean, some people jumped out of the, 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 the lineup. Yes. Um, Question one, time. Um, 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 are there pro procedural generated? Are there islands always changing? Is this something what is connected to real life? Is this something or is this kind of- so, so Okay. It's all handcrafted. I don't want, I'm kind of like, a, I, I'm not against procedural generation, but I want to be a different kind of uh, creator. I want to be the, it's, it's kind of like the, the complete opposite of like uh, No Man's Sky. It's all very much handcrafted. And it's all taken either from, you know, very personal experiences, uh, you know, kind of like deeply personal stuff, and also kind of mythologies of, uh, of uh, our world. Um, I'm thinking, I'm trying to make kind of like a modern myth. And I'm trying to think what is like the, the big cycles of our generation. For example, there's a lot of inspiration from climate change because I think climate change is this big thing that reminds us that, you know, there are still cycles in history and history is still happening even though we try to stop it. So a lot of things are about ecology in the game uh, and the mythologies of, 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 of climate change. For example, if one of the islands is uh, the seed vault, right, from uh, from Norway. I put it as an island because I think it's kind of like a big mythological thing of our of our modern age. So something somewhere between my personal, you know, kind of experiences and big modern myths, but it's all handcrafted. I wish you all the best. I wish you really the best for for the next for, for the next steps uh, on the production of. Uh, of how do you say it? Archipelago or archipelago? I think I think the right word to say it is archipelago. archipelago. Uh, in Hebrew, it's archipelag, uh, uh, but it's just like a series of islands, right? That's the like Denmark, the country I live here, which is half an island, and a lot of other places are islands. Uh, um, that's the small, small, disparate little levels. Thank you very much, Shalev. Please stay with us and um, chat with the others in Zoom. And um, Sheila, who's next? 
Tapo is next. Uh, hyper, hyper. Are you ready? Yes, hyper, hyper. Woo! Let's do this. Let's do this, Tapo. Uh, hey, everyone. Hyper, hyper. hyper, uh, hyper. My name is Tabo. Well, let me share my screen, actually, before I get started. Let me see, share the right screen. Yeah? Yes, you can see it. Yeah, yes, all right, cool. <laughs> all right, um, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tabo Tulo. And uh, yeah, I, this is my hyper talk. Let me start. Has the time started? Yes, I think so. Okay, so uh, just a short summary about myself. Um, I'm a game designer and a storyteller. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Space Island Studios. And I love making people smile. Um, so that's my superpower. Um, so the main topics of today, we're focusing on informal waste pickers, um, the game Dopa Dash, which has been inspired by the informal waste pickers, uh, as well as how this game can be used as a tool to educate um, uh, people and on, on adopting positive habits. So without further ado, uh, let me start with my hyper talk. So yeah, what are informal waste pickers? So informal waste pickers are men and women uh, riding around in South Africa, pushing trolleys and recycling. Um, they are responsible for, so what they do is they recycle for money. So this is what they do for a living. This is like part of their job. And yeah, they use this to support their families and themselves. Um, they're responsible for 90% of all recycling in South Africa. So that's a big chunk. And these guys are like literal, um, what, recycling heroes, you know, better than the Avengers. Because um, climate change affects all of us. Um, they also speed machine. They, they're known for traveling about 60 kilometers per hour. I don't know how much that is in brands, but yeah, I think we all use the same metrics. But yeah, that's how fast these guys can go, you know, um, faster than most cars. Um, and then the unfortunate part about these guys is they're unsung heroes, you know, because they the way they look and what they do is not like a glamorous life that we see on TV. They are not supported or recognized by the communities which they serve, all the people that know about them. So, so that's the unfortunate part about the street surf or being a street surf. So um with that note on that said note there's something positive that comes out of that and it is stop by dash uh stop by dash is our latest game so just to translate for some of you guys that don't know Dopa is pick up in zulu and dash is to you know it's in english it's to move fast really quick so uh that's the meaning of our name and it's a 3d combat racing game um it's about it's based on the street surfers job and what they do all right cool i'm almost out of time and we've managed to create a mechanic or we use mechanics in real world to reward uh, positive habits that people um, might uh, start doing once after, or once they play the game or after they play the game. And yeah, we used music and it's fun and the story is also nice, so check it out. So here are, the, here are some in-game images of Dopa Dash. So you can see these guys are pushing the trolleys. They look similar to the street surfers and the gold bags. Actually, the trash bag that they collect where they're going to find recycle material, which they use as in-game currency in the game. So using the whole economic system in the game um, for, for real world use. And what we're hoping to do is we want to impl implement this game in schools, um, hopefully primary schools and uh, high schools where kids will play this game and they'll be incentivized to, um, to recycle more using in-game rewards and out-game rewards. So here's like a young triangle of what people should be doing to recycle and um, increase their carbon footprint. And then the game does that. So, yeah, and that's about it. I'm done. Good job. Um, am I still on time? <laughs> Good job. Thank Would you. we have any questions for him? This is very, very interesting. I think because it also incorporates education into it. Uh, there's also a cultural element and, and a local aspect to it. So I really like it. Um, do we have any other comments? No, I mean, we, we also have to, I think we should definitely talk about it. So because, I mean, this is something what I really, really like when you're talking about culture and what is going on in Africa and so on. And I think um, those kind of games are just like incredible because, I mean, even when this is also something what Kish said yesterday, something like that, you know, I mean, take that what you have 
in your country, in your life, what surrounds you, and then put it into a game, and also not make it maybe too complicated, but maybe make it as a racing game, you know, what other people also understand. And this is something where people, I mean, we, I think we should not start making whatever super art house games in Africa right now. I think before we, we should definitely kind of get people to the games, you know, that they actually have fun, that they also, and then we just put something in there, a kind of a crit critical view, and this is something I read, it's a perfect example uh, of, 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 of uh, what a game can be and also how it can be discussed. And this is something what I really, really like. So what is your thinking or how, what, what, how you want to continue working on that game? Just before um, you answer that, please stop sharing your screen so that we see you. Thank you, fine. go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, so what's, the question is, what's my plan from here on out? What what do you want to do, right? Right. Oh, correct. Yeah. So the plan is to, like I said, we want to bring this up. I want to bring this into schools, you know, um, start incorporating it, hopefully in the syllabus as well. So we have like a, a, a three-way marketing strategy that we have uh, planned out where we want to include this in schools. And uh, in the spirit of um, eco, I mean, esports, we want to introduce esports in like schools, in African schools. And we saw that the best way to do it is if we introduce a game that's like also creating an immediate change within the schools. And uh, the schools that we've interviewed have really complained about kids not really being active in that sense or not being, uh, um, as uh, how can I say, as excited in cleaning up after themselves or recycling. So, you know, we're killing two birds with one stone and we want to um, also take it internationally as well. When we start approaching other schools and we have like major tournaments where it's like the street surfers in uh, uh, South Korea versus the street surfers in uh, South Africa, they're racing, you know, and people are bragging about how much uh, recycled material that they've collected, you know, and um, it, for, for us to get them to do that, we've, we've uh, worked out a in-game, out-game reward system that I can't really tell you about right now because we want to, it's still a work in progress, we want to release it for uh, next year. So we found a very unique and fun way of getting people to compete uh, to see how much cans they've collected and each school that does the most collection um, gets money from existing um, recycled companies that are uh, donating bins or they're uh, 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 working with the schools already. So that's uh, the second part about it. And the third part is we want to um, use it to also spread awareness about the street surfers, you know, um, educate people about what the amazing work they're doing and hopefully get them uh, uh, recognized by the government so that the uh, industry is taken seriously and they, and they also get benefits uh, from the government that um, other municipalities or industries get. So that's what you're trying to do. You want to change the world and make it fun at the same time. That's fantastic. And this is so everything, all, all this kind of stuff you do alone, or do you have a team? Because there's a lot of on the agenda. Yeah. So I have a team. Uh, fortunately, we had a, we got a sponsor, a local tech, uh, communications company that funded our our development up until this point. Uh, and they, we were lucky to also get the IP. So we have a, a lot of IP, but we still need more uh, funding and uh, yeah, funding for development, you know what I mean? To get it to a certain point right now, it's ready for release, but it's on a variable version. And I don't know, maybe it's a game developers thing, but we don't feel that we, it's quite ready yet. So yeah, we're looking at um, getting more people, spun, uh, partners, you know, people who can help us uh, achieve this vision and get to this global scale. So like, we have a big team. Um, it's just a matter of getting more people to outside, more people from the outside to help this team that we currently have now, so, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy big project. I mean, it's just, uh, I also like to think that you're not concentrating only on the game, that you're also kind of trying to connect different uh, different waste pickers from all over the world and, and, and find out how the government is working with them or what can we do or how we can arrange and also that we can give them a little bit more credit as yeah. they usually get probably, right? Yeah. Pretty cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pablo. Great Thank you, everybody. Interesting game. Um, who's next? So we've moved from Denmark. We've gone to South Africa. This is completely our tour. We're now going to Kenya. Calvin, hyper, hyper. Yeah. Are you ready? Hyper, hyper. Woo! Let's do this, Calvin, right? 
Unmute yourself and take hi, it. Hi, hi. Perfect. Hi, we can hear you. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to just uh, share my screen. Yes, okay, first ahead. of all, uh, thank you very much for letting me be here and share what I have to share with you guys, with you beautiful people. Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Are you guys seeing my screen? Not yet. Yes, it's loading. Ooh. Are you guys seeing my screen now? Uh, it's loading, yes. We, yes, we can see it. See my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, my name is Calvin Nathan Chungu, and I'm an interactive media designer. And I'd like to just talk over as I play the game before you. I hope everyone can see it. Yes, we can see it. The game is called Masai Mkali. So from my perspective, I see culture as a manifestation of ourselves as a collective. And if you look at Africa, it's very rich in culture. It's pure, it's diverse to condemn. They are beautiful. So we are beautiful from all types of, okay, from all, uh, from all types of food, our music, the architecture we have. And even if we put on our attire, it depicts and expresses who we are. And uh, games, as a, being a tool, just like a painter with a brush could, could be used to depict and express this culture in an interactive way that uh, a still picture alone may not, or just wearing something may not, yeah? And, uh, and there are several ways that a game might be able to do this. And, uh, and one of those ways, okay, there, there are six ways, which I found out myself, uh, my, my research and from what I've done. Uh, first of all, is the theme, the theme of the game. For example, what's the play species of the game? Can it depict something of uh, the culture you're from? The art style, a visual element, or even buttons themselves depict something culturally that is found in the house. And uh, the second one is uh, the story itself. The end goal, what, what is the, the quest of this hero of yours can be found through the culture and stories that have, have been there and have been told time and again by our grandparents. And uh, another point is our uh, immediate objectives, in the actions we take that are familiar to us within our communities and the things we do day by day. Yeah? And the other one is the character of the, who the player is. Or you can be a, a hero in one of like uh, Londa Magere, you can depict them and we, and people will associate them as, as Africans, we, we can associate with such because it's from our culture. And um, another one is the rules. Rules in games are things you, you have to go by and uh, do not break. Like for example, I had made that game on, different game from this one was called Bamukwaya, where you could uh, you could not go to the next level until you did you pass a uh, rite of passage. It was uh, about a uh, rite of passage of a child, so you have to pass this rite of passage because you cannot uh, begin marrying a woman before you cannot even before you be circumcised. Such things. And uh, the last one is like the enemies, the uh, the obstacles in your way it can be like the spirits that we believe in. And Africans are very superstitious people, and we have many sort of witchcrafty and that can be injected into game, yeah? So before you is a game called Masai Mkali. Uh, Masai is a certain community in Kenya. It's a very beautiful community in Kenya that, uh, that wear red and check stuff, but they're really warriors and uh, they even fight lions, they're brave warriors. So this game was to depict the actual bravery and the adventure they have, and even uh, if you see how the jump jump itself depicts whatever how the Maasai themselves used to jump instead of just of a normal jump, jump like a Maasai. And those are the things I'm talking about, like the immediate actions that you do that can be injected into games. 
in the space and the enemies. So the game is collecting his cattle and special ornaments. So that's, those are the current immediate objectives. The ornaments, the object, ornaments you have in games could be also be used as, as a form of marketing tool and a lot because these forms of expression has a lot of potential. You see the faisal basket, also African, and you first you can have the audacious piece surprise ahead. And maybe the surprise you have ahead is an ornament. And the ornament, if you get it, you may be you get it shipped to your door and uh, and such, which will go on and to promote the local uh, cultural creative industries, and which is a plus for both industries. And uh, that I wish to think. Uh, I wish we, you could have the sound, the game, but I'm using my headphones, everything is going right into my hair. And no, that's selfish, but I'm very much sorry for that. But you can find the game at Secret of Games. Secret of Games. And uh, you can play and enjoy and uh, experience what the Maasai culture is and what they have in store for you and the surprises, surprises you'll find. And uh, that's all I have to say today. And Thank you very much. Yay. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. If I have some more time, I, I'm going to uh, continue playing. Is, is this, the... Kevin, is this game already yeah. finished? Is it finished or is it uh, still work in progress? It's finished. It's finished. OK, where, where we can yeah. get it? Where? Yeah. You can get it at your secret of games. OK. Great. Oh, great. It's fantastic. Have you worked alone on it? I worked alone, but I was working within a company. I was doing it for Secret Secret Games. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's yeah. Really cool. That's really yeah, cool. I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very important to, to put uh, so much. You have so much stories to tell. All this kind of stories we don't know in, here in Europe. So, and uh, I think. Uh, yeah, for for uh, example, this enemy crew we have there. Uh, Masai used to believe that crow is a bad luck. So if you see a crow, you destroy it or you you make it fly away, you shoo it away. Shoo, 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 shoo. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, it's like same in this again later. <laughs> yeah, Thank you very much. Really cool. Super cool. Thank you so, so much. What, what are your okay. next projects? Are you working on something new as well? Yeah, I'm working on something new, but the current game I'm working on is it's a game for children. But it's also associated with a culture. It's about the uh, marbles. It's called uh, the Sabu Bano. The <laughs> kids game for counting, for educational content that will help help kids uh, enjoy counting and learn how to count. Just simple math, because math is really essential in our current things and what we're even doing, even making games itself. We all we all need math. Mm. You're yeah. also part of the Enter Africa uh, um, thing, right? So, uh, yeah, when, probably. Oh, when was it? One year ago. Um, yeah. I went to Berlin, but uh, uh, um, how how was this helping you to to develop as a game designer? It was very interesting. I, it helped me a lot because uh, I got to learn the importance of seeing other people's view on things. Uh, and when you're making a game, you're not making it for yourself. You're making it for other people, and you have to have their input and know how to think. And uh, <laughs> even uh, even the, the exercise we did, the, the game jam, the amazed game jam that we were there with you, it was really fun making a game in two days. It was intense. I didn't sleep. So just all night drawing here and recording there. And finally in the morning, we have something that could present to people and people could enjoy and experience what we had. And such activities and uh, collaborations really help someone grow in uh, a lot of ways that you cannot do in uh, just an indie game or your in your room just working on something. That's wonderful. It's good to hear. Are you still in contact with the people? I mean, it was quite a big group just to enter Africa. Yeah, we are still in contact. We're still in contact. That's wonderful. That's good. I wish you all the best for the future. Keep it up. And yep. uh, uh, um, thank you very much for joining.
And Thank we you. hope you see us in, in Nairobi soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Calvin. We've gone from a mass game experience to education games. We've gone to culture games. I, I don't know where we're going next, but I'd like to ask a colleague of mine, Susan, please introduce the next speaker and hype her. If you don't hype her, I'll come for you. No, no, I was supposed to say hyper, hyper. Yes. Yes. Oh, all of this thing. Oh, I don't know how to do this. Martina, I'm so happy you're with us. Uh, unfortunately, since Natasha can't be here, you're representing all of the female strength in the world in this hyper talk. So no pressure, but just hyper, 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 because you're going to do an amazing presentation. Martina, hype us up again. Let's go, Martina. Let's go. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's some pressure, but I'm going to handle it. Somehow. <laughs> uh, I hope my audio is fine. Yes. Yes, great, great. I will start my five minutes counter. And hello everyone, my name is Martina. I'm originally from Italy, but I'm in Berlin since I'm getting a bachelor degree in game design here in Berlin indeed. And today I'm not here to present my best work. I'm here to present my failure actually, because this semester I'm taking a course which is called Game A Week, which is pretty self-explanatory. And we are making one game per week with given teams. And we're trying to focus on the process and how to handle uh, failure, basically. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna try to point out the main learnings I got from this course. So I'm gonna to share my screen. Um, yeah, it should work, right? Yes, we can see your screen. That's great. So uh, yeah, my talk is gonna be about what I just mentioned. And let's begin. So um, the main point of this course, at least for me, is how the limited time, time frame of one week is going to force you to make very strong uh, design decisions. And for example, here, this was my first game. I was alone. I was scared. I, I'm not a very good coder. And what I had to do here was to try to fake a monster behavior that I I would have liked to have something like uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, but since I'm not a very good coder, I had to fake a com complex, not really complex, but at least an effective behavior by a very simple code. And so my, my main learning is adapt your design to your coding and not the opposite. And that's, that's going to be a very strong reminder for my future. Uh, then my second game was Vege Gefunden, which is a, kind of a parody of the process of going to Berlin, uh, which can be quite alone and, uh, sorry, com confusing and overwhelming at first. And yeah, this was not exactly a good process because that's not my art style. That's not what I would like to develop as, a, as my game developer persona. But I, it was great to adapt to another style because it's very educational. So you, you, you guess, uh, don't be afraid to explore aesthetics and visuals that you don't really feel like properly yours. Uh, then we have Channel BS, which was uh, my kind of game, very narrative. And I work with another girl who is into political games. So we try <laughs> to convey a message, uh, a, a very big message, which is how the media are, tend to prioritize um the wrong information so not not what's really happening in the world but you, you know stuff uh the main challenge here was to try to convey the message and the concepts in a way that was effective in it, even though the game is like three minutes long and it's you know not very uh complex um yeah uh -huh. i don't know if you are if the frame rate is getting the video smooth. So my, big, my biggest take is better to be su su subtle, subtle about narration and least space for interpretation than saying too much and being as a result misleading. Then we have Telemus, which is not really a game, it's 
more an interactive experience like it was kind of a vernissage of like art interactive art and that was an interesting project because it was fun to make but me as a as an individual uh i tend to overscope, and here i had to shrink my scope a lot and it was not exactly comfortable but so yeah, biggest takeout as small as scope, sometimes it's totally fine. Don't pretend to, don't expect too much from yourself. Then we have Be Read, which is a narrative game about the end of the world. And uh, we, we wanted to convey, we, we wanted to create a metaphor with uh, the end of a great love. And it, it was supposed to have a very strong bittersweet uh, feeling, but we, didn't have an approach that was iterative because my biggest take from this project is your narration, your narrative can, can be and has to be iterative too. That's a very uh, good thing to remember because um, you won't probably get a consistent game if you cannot achieve your first vision. But if you are iterative, it's gonna go fine. And yeah, thank you so much. If you want to try uh, these little games, here is my itch.io. I also had two major games which are you know more polished and yeah thank you so much for for listening i can't you can't just you, hello you 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 you're not all you're, you're not using five minutes nobody needs five minutes maybe maybe make it shorter talks <laughs> <laughs> just three minutes no more I, yeah, I, I, so I think, I, I, so think I started yeah. my time too early. Um, I had a timer here. Some questions uh, um, before everybody's kind of getting too crazy. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, um, before I ask you the question, is Natasha still in the line? I think we lost her. Uh, yeah, oh, she dropped. Okay, yeah. because she, she was kind of coming in and then, mm. yeah, hopefully. She's fine. Um, but yes, um, Martina, uh, I just have a question. I mean, we, we, we also started just working uh, together a little bit, but I mean, you're a game designer and I'm, uh, I'm super excited to see your work basically for the first time. Um, you never showed me that. Um, what, what is your main goal as a game designer um, to, to, to achieve? Because I mean, everything what you have in there is very, very arty, I would say, and very, uh, has a, has a big meaning always. It's not just entertainment, I would say. Yeah, that's a good point. I I didn't develop yet fully my persona as a game developer, but I think that I really want to make art through games, which means that I'm going to apply my personal taste in the games I make, which is not really uh, safe for marketing, like for the, yeah, you know, but yeah. And I really like, uh, the narration, the passive narration, like the, there's some background noise, I think, but it's fine. Um, I really like a uh, subtle passive narration. I like to work with really strong concepts, uh, some, some, sometimes heavy and uncomfortable through metaphor and uh, allegorical narration. That's, I think, my favorite thing ever. And I tend to be, I tend to use some kind of dark, sometimes a little, Sp spooky art style and settings and that's yeah that's i think the main point of my tastes which i apply in games yeah. i think you should be you shouldn't be afraid uh, um, for, for making art house games or art games i think this is something what also a charlotte uh, is gonna say uh, um or also agree on mm. because i mean there will be a future and something like that is gonna happen so i'm, I'm very sure uh, I'm, I'm very much pushing this into this kind of direction um, with the Amaze Festival, because I think uh, there are people outside who want to play such games, but they actually don't know because the market is not existing. Mm -hmm. Something like that needs to exist in the future, so that's why it's very important to have festivals which are showing those games. I think not, I mean, of course, I mean, you can do some commercial stuff as well, but I mean, uh, uh, on the other side, you should always think about doing something what is a little bit more meaningful, not just entertaining. And um, keep it up. It's very, very cool. So don't give up. As well, not after your student life. If you say, "Yeah, now I go in a big studio," you can do this, but also still continue working on that what you work. Charlotte, yeah. do you want to say something as well? Do you want to add something? 
Oh no, I'm just very excited about the things I was seeing. This is really, really, really cool. And and uh, your technical capabilities are better than mine. And I've been working in the industry for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> so don't, don't worry about your technical capabilities. Uh, I doubt that, but thank you <laughs> for the encouragement. Um, how, how do you work usually? Are you working alone? Are you working with another female partner? Or are you looking for just female de development partners? Or how is this for, for you? I think it's... Uh, 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 how how would you how would you design a studio if you start a studio? Oh, that's I think that the gender shouldn't be a big part. I, I mean, yeah. we all know that the the female part of the game industry is not very strong yet, but mm. it's getting better. Yes. Um, and yeah, so I think that if I was a CEO that needs to you know hire very good co-workers co-workers I wouldn't care about the gender but I would care about their sharpness and artistic taste and yeah the the uh, their ability I yeah think. it's a very good point I think it's also something about uh, I mean but of course I mean you have to check as well if there are other people who are also interested for this job so and, and also open up and uh, and looking for a diverse environment I think that's yes. Really important. yes 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 um, that's, think, that's uh, true because as, as I've heard from Olivier uh, Madiba I think it's also about uh, and also from from uh, 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 Brian Afande he also said I mean the social skills or soft skills are very important you know this is yes. something that also can help a studio to sustain and work together and uh, and kind of bring this project to the next level Yeah, those are very good points. Those are very good points. Um, I think I'd just like to ask first. So no, we don't do this in hyper talks, but maybe from each of you, the challenges that you faced, um, you know, in your in day to day, you know, as a, a designer or game developer, um, literally one minute. Uh, we'll start with uh, Shalab. I'm sorry, just, just the question again, because I couldn't hear it completely. I challenges and lessons you've learned. In, oh, my yeah. God. Uh, <laughs> it's one minute. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, two challenges that I've been seeing recently is first, of course, you know, uh, you know material. This is such, such a volatile industry. And, uh, and you know, things, things that are sometimes very, very hard kind of like uh, you know uh, get the game you want running with uh, with funding and with with partners and stuff like that that's that's uh, maybe in other arts but also in arts the other thing is uh, and it's connected is is you know keeping your eyes on the prize it's sometimes hard to be focused on the vision because there are so much technicalities in our industry there's so much technical challenges to overcome with every game almost that's uh, that uh, Remembering, you know, uh, what the vision is, and kind of maintaining the focus on the artistic vision is always kind of like something you, you gotta readjust, 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 and remember why you're doing the game you're doing. So those are the two challenges I'm kind of thinking about recently. Thank you, uh, Tabo. Hyper, 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 hyper. Oh. <laughs> hyper, hyper. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so for for me and um, the team or the studio, the challenges that we faced is. A, I think the biggest challenge we have right now is getting uh, more women to join the team. Right now, we have like an all-male team, and it's really hard to, because we have female characters in the game, and it's really hard for us to conceptualize or give like a, a proper story or meaning to the, the female characters that we have. Uh, we're looking at also developing a new game, like an all-female story cast, but we can't because it's a bunch of guys talking about girls, and you know, it, us appropriating the couch and something that we don't want to do. So for us, the biggest challenge we have is getting some female uh, developers, artists on the team to come join us. Um, and I think the second part is understanding the business. You know, um, we're pretty young in this. You know, um, a lot of us are just postgraduates. You know, the company's only been running for a year. So just understanding the business, the paperwork side of it. You know, um, finding ways to make money because you know can't really live off passion and water. So just understanding paperwork, you know, the whole contractual stuff, getting clients, making money from the game has also been some a bit of a challenge for us. Those Thank are our challenges. You. Thank you. Ladies, they're looking for you. Please, 
I know Are you? we would like Natasha. to do this. Please make sure you do this. <laughs> Natasha, we're also looking for you. You're here. So we'll give you one minute to settle down. Uh, let me just ask Calvin. Um, challenges and lessons you've learned as Natasha prepares to go next. Okay. Uh, as Tabo has said, some of the issues or challenges finding a woman game developer and uh, viewing things from her side, and also sometimes uh, using through culture, expressing culture through games, uh, you have challenges in terms of what actually are you communicating? Because there's a point there was a form of uh, this thought when we wanted to say at the end of the game after collecting cattle you you win you win your bride but uh yes in uh, in kenya in, Af in africa it's something that is there for dowry but uh this depicts women as and objectifies them as items to be worn and that is not actually the things we do we want to communicate to the players and those are the Certain challenges in expressing culture through games. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Calvin. So I think Natasha is ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hyper, hyper. Okay. Um, hyper, hyper. I'm almost ready. <laughs> okay. So when you're ready, okay. you uh, you so, can share um, your screen and I start couldn't presenting. get my presentation on my PC. Okay. So um, I don't know if it's okay for me to just talk about it. Perfect. Yes, you can. Yes. It's fine. Yes, it's five you have minutes. five minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Hyper, hyper. Okay, so um. Welcome, Natasha. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about phase three. So phase three is a two, 2D matching game and it consists of emojis. So uh, basically the game contains two games inside of it. Uh, it contains the first part, which are zonal cells. And in this zonal cells, it contains, um, it actually contains cells uh, in which emojis are grouped into, um, they are grouped into uh, different categories according to maybe uh, their food item and, um, probably sometimes they are hospital items. So basically the game uh, is where uh, warrior emojis try to escape the, the, the captive cells, they are kept in captive cells, right? So uh, they, they, they will be trying to escape. So matching three items at a time, you actually get to, to, to you actually get to escape. But um, as we go further the game, uh, a time I set, for example, um, it, 10 minutes or two minutes uh, so that the player can uh, match uh, three items in the game. And after that, uh, the player may, may actually get to escape the cells. And um, after that, uh, if you actually fail to match on time, you, you can actually, um, the cells will close down, which is my favorite part of the game. It's an animation that happens whereby the cell collapses and um, the user would have lost the game. And another part of the game is um, actually when uh, the, the, the user, they are called the spider cells, right? So this is another part of the game. There's a spider cell. It contains a spider guards at the bottom of the screen and uh, emojis will be falling out of the sky. So in order to make sure that you actually save the emojis, you make sure that you tap each emoji and uh, by tapping the emoji, it uh, transitions into another animation. And by transitioning to another animation, you actually get to escape this. But if you fail to, to actually tap the emoji, uh, the, 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 actually the emojis turn to, into spiders as well. So uh, the basically structure the game and uh the motivated creation of theory was motivated by the love emojis I, I i actually adore emojis so i was like um as an african game developer i wanted to bring something different and something new that people might actually enjoy saying that that's different and uh if i paid my presentation i would have shown you uh all the pictures of uh the orientation of the game and basically uh, I just the emojis myself, uh, they, 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 they are designed in such a way that some of them have glasses and uh, some of them have, um, they, they have hats uh, and they are generals and uh, different uh, type of structures uh, 
and we also have the DMGs and um, they are animated in such a way that I think is the my army motivated to play the game and uh, just building the game uh, was a, it was something that I did on my own the art and uh, some of the music files and um, basically every structure of the game I did it on my own uh, because I wanted to 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 build something on my own and because uh, to, to actually look for some people in, in my country who are interested and who, who, who are willing to invest in something like that it was pretty difficult. So I, I just said, I need to make this happen. So uh, I tried best with the resources that I had uh, and tried to uh, face to what it is to be. So that's basically what this year is all about. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you very much. Hyper, hyper. Hyper, hyper. Awesome. Thank you, Yuri. Good. You also, you also, you also can see it um, in, in the Amaze space. Um, it's not on Windows, it's not on Mac, it's on Android, and uh, it's a success, right? I mean, I've seen the download numbers. They're pretty cool. So uh, um, what do you think about that? So, I mean, you're reaching the perfect market, right? Natasha, can yeah. you hear us? Natasha, are you still with us? Natasha, hi. Okay. hyper, hyper, Natasha, can you can hear you? us? Okay, I cannot hear anything, so it feels... Okay, so let me type the question in the chat for you. Yeah. Well, it was wonderful to see. Um, you can see the video on, on in a made space and uh, um, oh the time is off. So can you can you answer? Uh, is, is your is your mic on, Natasha? Oh okay. So uh, my game has um, like uh, hundred plus downloads for now because I didn't really. Um, I never really uh, advertised it to, to that many people. So for a start, it now has like a hundred plus downloads. But I think it's, it's uh, fantastic because I was checking a little bit. Um, you're not just a game designer, you're also a TV host. So maybe this combination is very good that you're actually on the TV and you can present your game already on TV. Is this allowed or not? <laughs> I don't think she can hear us. Why? Um, I think we'll just probably type for her in the chat um, okay. because she cannot uh, she cannot hear anything you're trying to tell her. Ah, okay, yes. So um, uh, let me see. Let me see what we we'll do. Um, in case you have any questions for Natasha, please type it in the in the chat, and then I think yes. she'll pick two or three questions and. Yeah, in case you also have any feedback for any of the presenters we've had today, hyper hyper, please post it in the chat. Hyper hyper. But we can still continue this because I mean you have this question, right? This challenge yes. question. Martina, I think, is next. Yes. Yes. Okay, let me see. Um but still we have some time. Hmm. At the beginning of my career as a game developer, I was very positive because the first game I ever made received an incredibly good feedback on HIO, so I was really, really uh, positive. Um, sometimes, at least in the school environment, like with my peers, uh, the, it, it feels like you as a female has to work a little more to prove yourself, which at the beginning really bothered me, and now it doesn't anymore because, well, I'm getting I'm getting more confident, I guess, with with you know the career that I'm I'm trying to build up because I'm getting better. So you know, um, but yeah, I mean, it's I think all the challenges I'm I'm facing are more with myself. Um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So and good luck with this. That all all, all your dreams come true. 
and, and everything is kind of the challenging things are not so hard that it's not this is un unchallenging. Yeah. <laughs> uh, excuse myself for my bad English, but uh, uh, probably understood. Natasha can hear us. I see this. Uh, um, but yeah. Yes, I can hear you now. I couldn't hear a thing oh. just now, but oh, I can awesome, awesome. finally. <laughs> I just had one question. I just had one question uh, before the other question. So, uh, um, so because I mean, uh, I, I told the people out, outside your TV host in Zimbabwe, and uh, um, how does it help that you reach your players? Maybe everybody should be a TV host and then can sell a lot of games over TV. Yeah, okay, so uh, I'm a presenter for a uh, Station. Sometimes it may help. I could reach my users by simply saying, uh, guys, you could actually get fishery from um, Google Play Store, and it actually helps me get uh, some downloads here in my country. So uh, I think it's pretty beneficial because I get to, 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 to like talk to some people and reach out to some people so that they can download my game through the show. Are you also interested in the game scene? I mean, is this something, uh, I mean, Zimbabwe has probably no festival. Are you going to other festivals and uh, meet as well game developers in Zimbabwe? Um, how is this, how is the community in Zimbabwe at the moment? Okay, in Zimbabwe right now, those communities, uh, uh, they, they, they are really, 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 really scarce. And uh, so sometimes uh, reaching out to other countries uh, it actually helps uh, because in my country those things uh, are not really that um, they, they are not platforms or opportunities like that in Zimbabwe. Do you know Tita and Kuba? Sorry? Do you know Tita and Kuba? Uh, no. No? Um, she, she's, uh, she's doing a lot uh, uh, especially for women in games in Africa. She has a lot of uh, institutions, also a blog, and maybe I can bring you in contact that you also can meet the community a little bit more and, and also work with them together in the future. So let's see if you're interested in that. I think she lost the audio. Natasha, can you still hear us? All these no. crazy technical problems nowadays. Yes. Incredible. I think we actually Hopefully might lose her. The whole COVID thing is gone. over soon. I hope so. I hope so. I think we've lost Natasha. We don't have to do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we miss <laughs> the physical so interactions. So yeah. Natasha, hyper, hyper. Everybody, hyper, hyper. Okay. Yeah, I think this hyper. was a, a fantastic round of uh, hyper talk. Thank you very much for joining the hyper talk. The audience outside, um, you also can uh, uh, um, yeah get all the information on the website about the people. Check out the main space. And uh, um, tomorrow we also have a long program, I think the whole day. So it will be awesome. Maybe Sheila, you want to say something about the program tomorrow? Yes, for sure, for sure, for sure. So we have two wonderful workshops tomorrow. We have one in the morning, uh, and then we have another uh, workshop in the afternoon. Let me just pull this to tell you the time. We will have a session from 11 to 1. And we will be discussing uh, um, at least finding and defining your vision. Uh, that session will be by uh, Fran Francis. Sorry? Francisca Steiner. Yes. And then we will have another session in the afternoon with Dennis Mbudia on Mesh and Shape uh, Sprite Tool for 2D level design. That is from 2 to yeah, 4 that's years awesome. That's awesome. You're going to join. We hope join? to see you guys. Yeah, I'm going to be there. Awesome. Great. You're going to join us now. Um, I'm going to be there, that's for sure. Um, everything won't be possible without 
the crazy good work from Good Institute, Nairobi, and Alliance Francaise. Um, thank you very much, and as well to the streaming partner we have. Um, it's wonderful to work with you all together. So uh, uh, maybe there's also a chance to maybe announce a little or tell a little bit about the team, also about the back, you know, the people behind the camera. Yes, it's time. The bus team. Um, can we ask someone to at least, Lorenzo, can you <laughs> open your video? Yes, please. We are right, so excited to see. have you guys. But then we make a wonderful, perfect it's... last. No. Do you see how cool my background is? We should make a picture. We should make a huge screenshot. Yay! That's Lorenzo. Yay! Yay! Hyper! Hyper! Yes. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Thank you. You you're doing a fantastic job. Everyone well, the is talk was a really, really fun part. This, this, uh, this day that made my day basically so uh, um, and also it's working online it was great it was a pleasure and uh, hopefully see you all very very soon in the physical way Charlotte all the best to Denmark Martina to Berlin Calvin to Kenya and um, Natasha to Zimbabwe and um, yeah thank you very much Abo. Abo. Vincenzo. Vincenzo, thank you. Love you all. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.